All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. And I got a burn going in the Pro tonight, and I've had a lot of questions about the jig kit, uh, how to use it, and how to put it together. There's been some people that kind of misunderstood the, the instructions. Uh, I am going to update the file to include an instruction book. <laughs> uh, and also, I want to make this video just to kind of clear up any confusion that may be out there, because like I said, I've had the same question from a lot of different people. And I guess it was a little oversight on my part that, that I felt like maybe it wouldn't need to be explained. But regardless, tonight I'm going to walk you through my jig kit, how to use it, how to make it as far as the physical aspect of it. We're not going to get into the computer part of it tonight because I do have a fairly recent video on burning those files. So uh, if it's the files that you want to know about, I've already got a video out there that's fairly recent. This is more about the, the physical jig kit itself and, uh, and, and how to put it together, when to do what. So stick around for a minute. I'm gonna move over to the table. I've got my D1 set up and I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, guys, here it is. Uh, I've got a couple of extra pieces over here that aren't part of this. So I'm going to move those out of the way. But this is pretty much, I mean, I don't have every jig panel uh, that, I, that I have. I don't have every one of them out here. But hopefully this will be enough to explain to everybody. Uh, this is the uh, locking panel, okay? Now, I broke this one when I was uh, putting it together earlier. I dropped it and blah, blah, broke it. Uh, this one is actually the stackable version which the only real difference is I put a notch here to allow for the cables when the gantry comes back. Uh, this is not necessarily the one that you're gonna wanna use. I just cut this one because it was, it was close to the top of the files when I opened it. Uh, but that's the locking file, the, the locking jig. All right, throw that over to the side. So you'll take these two pieces here, the locking jigs, and you'll just line up these little, little notches here. And the only reason I had to do this is because this thing is wider than the capabilities of the X tool. So I had to make it in two pieces so that you could make it at home. And then just slide it over, get the feet to go down into the holes. They may be a little snug. Some of the machines, there's a little bit of variation in the legs. Uh, but once you get it, once you get it there, just kind of press it a little bit. If, if this is tighter than it needs to be, you can take some sandpaper and just take your finger and reach in there and kind of sand it just a little bit to get it to slide better. Uh, there is, I have found some of these machines, there's just a ever so slight difference in the legs and it's not all that often, but it does happen. So once you get that on there, that's, I'm gonna turn this where you can actually see the jig in place. Uh, disregard my air assist hose. But once you get that in place, the, the, the way this is made and the way all my jigs are made, I made them to where you can put the laser at the home position and it'll be out of the way. This is one of the most recent files that I made and added to the bundle. This is a large squaring jig. And all that does basically is if you have a large piece of material, uh, the reason that I made this one, I had a guy message me about 12 by 12 mirrors and 12 by 12 tile. And so this is plenty enough room to hold a 12 by 12. You could probably go a little wider with that, with the, uh, with the D1. But all you have to do is place whatever it is in that corner right there. And I'll just use this piece of wood, for example. You just place it in here and your X and Y axis are, uh, are square. You don't got to be measuring. You don't got to, it's a lot less work because you cut this with the, the X tool D1. All of this is locked together. And so when you put that there, if it's touching here and touching here and it is square as far as the shape, then you know it is square. Now, I always recommend a fully circled, you know, template if you, if you can or jig, but you know, for those mirrors and stuff like that, that's what I use these things for, for mirrors and square objects. Now, when you get my, if you've downloaded my file and maybe you're having some trouble and you can't figure it out, there's been a, a lot more people message me lately. So I don't know if, uh, I, I don't know what the deal is with that. But when you, when you get the file and you open the zip file, there's gonna be a bunch of, uh, 
a bunch of what I call jig panels in here. These are your jig panels. These are the locking panels. And then the jig file is what makes these holes here, okay? So this would just be a solid piece of, uh, of wood. It's gonna be square and it's gonna have these teeth on it. And I've got one over here that is blank that I just added to the, to the pack. This is a 12 inch panel. Now, I'm, not, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it's not 12 inches, it's under 12 inches. And the reason that is, is because I've had a lot of people message me and say they can't find anything but 12 inch material. And so I've made this one 11 inches by 11 inches. That way, if all you have to work with is 12 by 12 wood, then you can, you can burn this because I also have a 12 inch stock version of the locking bars. Now, I had to modify the file heavily. And if you don't have to have the 12 inch file, I wouldn't use it because it, what I had to do is basically I had to take away some of the hole that holds the leg in order to make that thing fit on two pieces of 12 inch material. But this 12 inch panel, the thing about this one is, is you're gonna have to be careful because it will actually fit anywhere on these teeth because these teeth are, are identical. So if you're gonna use it, I would recommend either using it on you know this side or this side or put you a mark so that you know because when you burn your jig file into it and you make it look like this, if, if you don't put this panel back in the same exact spot that you had it when you burned the, the holes, then your jig is not gonna be effective. So with this, the, the thing I like about my setup is I can go from like this little 12 inch panel and then I can swap over if I wanna do another Apple Pencil, or if I wanna do some more little medallions with uh, smiley faces or tokens for, you know, whatever, I can drop this one on there. Uh, if I, once I do that, I can pop this guy here off. And if I wanna put my rotary, now I only have the classic rotary, is what I'm gonna call it, the original rotary. But I did have one of my followers who had a RA2 and he was willing to uh, help me out with the measurements and we we kind of wound up he, he he basically took this and modified it to make it work for a RA2 and he contributed to the stack for those guys that have the RA2 and he said that it worked he sent me pictures of it and so I included it with the download as well uh, but like I said I don't have one so I can't test it but uh I gave him a little credit in there with it. He, uh, he, he voluntarily gave me the, the, the dimensions and everything to put on the file. So that is in there for the RA2 if you have that one. But then when you get through doing your uh, tumblers, you wanna throw this guy to the side and you wanna knock out a couple of uh, coasters. This is the four inch coaster jig. And I do have a three inch jig that I'm gonna be doing hopefully the next week or so. I've had a request for a three inch jig to do squares and circles, and I'm just gonna modify it and uh, drop it out there to, to work with the system. And so when you get through with your uh, coasters, you decide you're through with the square coasters, you've done seen the large jig there. Uh, if you wanted to do some round coasters or mirrors or whatever, uh, there's the four inch jig. And the thing that makes this, this so repeatable is the fact that this piece of wood right here is made in essence to the uh, to the machine and it does so by using these two pieces that lock together and then when you lock this other piece it makes it even more rigid so i mean you can you can move the machine and the whole thing's going to move the tighter your cuts here uh on this piece here the tighter the cuts the less variation you'll have so i recommend if especially if you've got the 20 watt i recommend trying to get as small of a curve as you can and trying to get these as tight as you can now you don't want to overdo it because i i did uh in the early stages of development of this i did make it a little too tight and it at one point uh it was just ridiculous to try to get it loose and to try to get it on there so i went back and added a little bit of wiggle to it but it's not enough to hurt uh and then i've got a small square and jig, same principle. If you've got an object that has a square corner on it and you want to get it square, you can use these two little recesses here to do so. 
Uh, this will work for coasters, but you're going to be limited to doing just one at a time. All right, and I also have uh, a file out there for dog tags. Now, I haven't cut one because I use Junior for my dog tags, my little uh, Atom stack. And so I, I didn't even cut a jig for this machine. Now, I do have a three-card uh, jig that I made for this one. And the reason being is I'm not doing these like business cards per se. I do them for like just more or less gag gifts and that type of thing or just, you know, just one or two and doing them three at a time is it's, it's more than uh, enough for me and so you can take your business card jig and slide it on here and lock it in place and so the object is every jig that you own every jig that you make can be locked into this thing and then you can remove it and put another one on without having to move your machine if you're like me and you've got everything mounted or whatever now this jig does have the inserts uh, these inserts are slightly thinner than the material that the jig's made out of. And then I use blue painter's tape on the back to hold those pieces in place. And what that does is that gives me a little bit of a recess to hold that card in place, but not enough that the card falls below the jig and winds up sliding under it because those cards are really, really thin. So if you're going to do business cards, I recommend doing some inserts. If you don't have a thinner material to use, all you really got to do is take another piece of your material before you cut it and hit it real good with a sander on both sides and bring it down just enough to where you have that little lip right there. So you don't have to have two different thicknesses of material. You just need one piece of material and then take the second piece and sand it enough to where it is actually thinner than the piece that you use to cut the jig. So, and then use the inserts. And even on my dog tag jig, I have inserts for it it's included in the file as well. But you have to, and I wanna repeat this guys, you have to, in order for this to work, because it will not work, if you, if you take the jig file and you impose it on here in light burn before you cut this out, it's not gonna work right. This needs to be snapped into the location that you're gonna be using it in. It needs to be snapped into there and secured to the X tool, then once this is in place, then you extract the jig file, the actual light burn file itself that is, is a jig, and you would burn it into this piece of wood. And then without moving anything, you would take those cut lines, turn those cut lines into a tool line, and leave them where they are, save that file. Name it, whatever you want to name it, and even write the name of the file on here or engrave the name of the file on here so that you know that this panel goes with this file. And the next time that you put this on there, if you put this back in the same location that you had it in when you made that cut and you snap it back in that location, it's going to be right. You're not going to have to frame. You're not going to have to do a bunch of measuring. It's going to be right. So that's the way it's designed to work, guys. And I use it on my machine. Uh, since I've moved uh, my D1 out of the enclosure, I did not have a, uh, a jig assembly for it. So I went ahead and burned this one earlier just so I'd have one because I don't, in case I do need to, to do some engraving with this guy. But the stackable version is what I use. And I'll just show you, show you how this works. Now I cracked this one, so I'm gonna put it on the bottom. But what I do with the stackable version is basically I take two of these guys, put them together, put a little wood glue in the middle of them so that it holds them together and put them on there like this. And so you've got twice the depth of teeth, it's twice as thick, it's twice as sturdy, and that makes it that, makes it that much better. But now it will kind of make it a little more difficult to get uh, your jigs on and off sometimes but it makes this a lot thicker. So this doesn't have a tendency to bow and, uh, and move like it can if it's too thin. You just have a little bit further to go once you get it glued together. You have a little further to go to put your panels on there. But, you know, if you wanted to be lazy, you could actually stack these panels as well. Uh, if you didn't want to take that one off and, <laughs> and you wanted to do another one that had, as long as it had bottom in it, I mean, you could technically put these guys on here and stack them on top of that other one. 
And so now you would have like a jig under a jig. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can with the stackable, with the stackable setup like that if you put two of them together. All right, guys, I hope that helps uh, clear up any, uh, any concerns or any issues that anybody had with the jig setup. And like I said, I'm gonna be updating the, uh, the file. Hopefully I'll go ahead and get it, get it extracted and uh, upload it tonight before this video comes out in the morning. But uh, I just wanted to put that out there because I have been getting four or five messages a day asking, you know, how do I go about doing it? So just remember, cut the locking panel. Cut the jig panel. Once you've got the locking panel and the jig panel cut, put them on the machine. And then once you've got those two pieces of wood on the machine to where that basically that machine is one, one unit, then you'll take and you'll burn the, uh, the jig files onto that piece. And that'll make a very highly repeatable uh, setup for you to be able to use to do multiple coasters, multiple coins, multiple, multiple whatever you want, really. Uh, pencils, pens, you name it. And uh, so if, if you didn't already know, uh, my Etsy store, the same name as the YouTube channel, go look it up and that's where all the files are located. But I, hope, I really hope this helps clear the air on some of this stuff. And I appreciate all you guys' input and I appreciate the guys that uh, told me how, how they liked the file. And for those of you that have gave me input, that's the reason that that file size keeps growing is because every time somebody shows me a different variation or an issue with a you know a fitting on certain machines or whatnot i create one and put it in there you know there was actually a couple of people whose machines were like three millimeters the legs were three millimeters further than every other x tool that i had encountered and so i created another file in there for those situations to where if yours is three millimeters wider then there's already a file in there i don't know how that happened i guess it happened at the factory but uh if you need that it is in there uh, as well as the 12-inch stock files. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you, and uh, thanks for stopping by. And as always, guys, hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. And everybody have a good day.